The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. For number 11, it says, which of the following expressions is or are equal to 1? So again, we have a PQR question. Let's go through each statement. So for P, we have tangent of 22 degrees times tangent of 68 degrees. So what's important to know for this one is your complementary angles rule. Uh, you can see that 22 and 68 <clears throat> are complementary angles because they add to 90. So that must mean that one of these could be changed to cotangent of the other angle. So tan 68 is the same thing as cotangent of 22, or tan 22 is the same thing as cotangent of 68. Either way you do this, let's just keep the angle smaller, even though like I said it doesn't really matter. Tangent times cotangent, tangent is sine over cosine, and cotangent is cosine over sine. So everything cancels out, and you definitely just get 1. So P is definitely does equal 1, so that one works. Let's try statement Q. So here we have 1 over cotangent squared of 50 degrees minus cosecant squared of 50 degrees. So for this one, let's change this into uh, more manageable angles. So cotangent squared of 50 is the same thing as tangent squared of 40, because that's the complementary angle. And cosecant squared of 50 is the same thing as secant squared of 40, because those are complementary angles. So now we need to think about, these are tangent and secant squared of the same angle. This is one of our Pythagorean identities for trig functions. So recall that 1 plus tangent squared theta is always equal to secant squared theta. That's one of your Pythagorean identities that you should know. So you can see here, if we wanted to get tan squared minus secant squared, we'd have to subtract this over and move the one to the other side, which would make this all on the bottom equal to negative one. Which means that that statement is equal to negative one, not one. So Q then uh, is not equal to one. That's not what we want for this problem. So finally, statement R. So statement R says we have sine squared of 20 plus sine squared of 160. Sine squared of 160. So what you need to think about here is this might even be easier to recognize just using the unit circle. Because 20 degrees is some pretty low angle here. And 160 is the same angle measure except in the other quadrant. Because think about it, all the way around has to be 180. So 160 is 20 up from that. 20 is 20 up from the beginning. So these are both angles of 20 if you think of them towards the x-axis. And sine is the y part. Well, the y part of these is definitely the same. So those two are actually the same thing, and they're not any particular number that you know, like one half, they're not. So really, we could just say it, they're both sine squared of 20. Let's just make it simpler like that. which is just 2 sine squared of 20. And sine of 20 degrees is going to be some weird decimal, some irrational number. 
And when you square that and times 2, you're definitely not going to get 1. And that's the only thing we were concerned about. Is this equal to 1 or not? So this is not equal to 1 either. So we got that only statement P was equal to 1. So that's answer choice A. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.